Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. I've been using Premiere Pro for well over a decade now, yet every year I discover new features and tools that I didn't know existed that greatly sped up my workflow once I started using them. So in this quick video, I want to run you through a couple of my top tips for how to improve your workflow with some of the really cool, useful tools that are already available in Premiere Pro. But in the spirit of not wasting time, let's jump right into it. Master clip effects make it really easy to apply and change effects to many pieces of the same source video at the same time. For example, here's a talking head video that I've chopped up into many pieces to cut out all of the evidence of my horrendous grasp of the English language. Now it looks a little dull. So let's apply a Lumetri color effect to this clip to make it look a lot brighter, vibrant and overall more pleasant. Nice. But we only applied the effect to the first clip on the timeline. We now have to copy the same effect to all of the other clips as well. Also, if you now want to change the effect a little, you will have to copy the changes across to all of the other clips as well. And that's rather awful. A much better way to do this is to come up into the effects control panel. Then select the source tab. Any effect you apply in here will be applied to the source video footage itself and this will affect any clips or slices that you take out of the source video footage and use anywhere in your project. Subclips allow you to extract sections of one potentially very long video and turn them into separate named items in your project panel. For example, here's a long clip of some b-roll that I shot for one of my PC building videos. You can, of course, chop the clip up on your timeline and cut off all of the pieces that you want, but this can often become hard to manage because you just end up with a ton of nameless snippets on your timeline that you then have to somehow fit into the rest of your edit. Instead, simply double click the clip on your timeline or in your project panel to bring up the source monitor. Scrub to the start of the piece of the video that you want to extract, press I to set an in point, move forward to where you want the clip to end, then press O to set the out point. You can see right here on the timeline that you've essentially highlighted this little snippet. Then right click onto the footage in the source monitor and select to make subclip and give the subclip a useful name. Premiere Pro will now create a new item in your project panel that represents the extracted piece of video. Now it does take a little longer than just chopping everything up on your timeline, but you can now see, sort, organize and use these clips much more easily in your project. Did you ever notice this empty My Effects folder in your Effects panel? Now, whenever you want to apply an effect, you might dig through these folders or come up and search for your effects and apply them to the clips on your timeline. But if you think about it, you're very likely using the same effects many times throughout your editing journey and you can actually simply grab them and drag them directly into the My Effects folder, which makes your favorite effects much easier to find and use. You can also create new custom folders and store and sort your effects to match your preferred way of working. The cool thing is you can also do this with effect presets. For example, let's select these two effects that we applied to our clip, a glow and a vignette effect. Right click and select to save preset. Give the preset a useful name and now you will find it in the default presets folder in the effects panel of Premiere Pro. And again, you can drag this preset into your My Effects folder or any other folder that you create so it's much easier to find and use. Did you know that you can actually select a bunch of consecutive clips on your timeline and press Ctrl and D or Command and D on the Mac to apply your default transition to all of the cuts between them? Now in order to set what your default transition is, in the effects panel you can simply right click any of the video or audio transitions and select set selected as default transition. Now pressing Ctrl or Command and D will apply that transition instead. Pretty nifty, though you may want to make some tweaks to individual transitions to avoid boring your viewers with the same thing over and over. You can also change the default transition duration if you simply come up into Edit, Preferences, Timeline and in here there are settings for the length of your default video and default audio transitions. Pretty cool stuff. Track targeting allows you to control which video and audio tracks get used when you copy and paste content around your timeline. For example, if you're working with a complex edit and you have a new piece of footage that you want to insert somewhere, you might try to drag the item in place, but that can be a lot of scrolling. Or you could try to cut and paste the clip in place, but that might just overwrite content that is already in place or shift everything off to the right. On the left side of your timeline where you can see the names of your tracks, you can actually click on these blue little rectangles to toggle them on and off and this defines which video and audio tracks are enabled for targeting. Pasting will only paste content into the tracks that are enabled, so you can ensure that any content you copy and paste around doesn't impact the footage that is already there. 
and then you can move it around to the spot where you actually want it. And that's all this to it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to support me, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel and I greatly appreciate it. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the comment section below. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.